Hey everyone, welcome to today's Take Heart. Hope you're doing all right. There's a moment in Matthew chapter 14 where the disciples are struggling in a storm in a boat and Jesus appears to them and he says to them, verse 27, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And Pete responds really well at this particular moment. He says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you and I'll come out there on the water, which is not what I would have said. I would have said, Lord, if it's you, would you come over here so I can double check it? But Pete responds with this fierce boldness and he steps out the boat, he walks across the water. The other 11 are stuck in the boat just being spectators and he walks towards Jesus. But then, um, kind of famously really in this story, he loses his nerve and it says in verse 29 um, or verse 30, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Matthew 14. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? And um, I, I don't think Jesus says this, you know, when we see Jesus in the Gospels, I don't think he's saying this in a super cross voice to Pete. Why did you doubt? What's got, you know, what's wrong with you? I don't think he's saying that. What he's saying is, oh, Pete, you muppet. Look how far you've come. Look how close you got. You know, the, the fact that, I think the fact that, it says the moment Jesus, the moment Pete starts to sink, Jesus immediately grabs him. To my mind, what that says is Pete is pretty close to Jesus at this point. It doesn't say the moment Pete began to sink, Jesus sprinted across the waves and grabbed him. He just reaches out his hand and grabs him because Pete's so near Jesus at this point, And yet he starts to sink. And so I think the sense of it is, Pete, you made it this far. Why are you, why are you doubting now? The way the message puts it is Jesus says to Peter, what's got into you? What's got into you, Pete? And I read this um, a couple of weeks ago when I was having a particularly low day. I don't know if you're having any of those right now, but I've had a fair number of them. And uh, it was just after they'd announced the schools were shutting and I was thinking, oh my word, here we go again, I'm trying to juggle kids and work and, um, you know, it's just gray and it's horrible and it's January and the weather's terrible and there's nothing to do. and. You know, and, and um, I was just really struggling. And, and on top of all of that, just feeling worn, worn down, really, from the last year. And I just read this passage. Uh, it just came up in my reading for the day. And I just felt like the Lord just spoke to me through it, just through what he says to Peter here, which is that, hey, don't stop trusting me now. You've come this far. Don't stop trusting me now. And we have come this far. And I know it's been a rocky road. And I know for lots of us we'll have made mistakes and we'll have things we wish we'd done better. But do you still want to serve Jesus? I know I do. Do you still love him? Do you still want to bring glory to his name? I know I do. We've come this far. Let's not stop trusting him now. Let's not start doubting him now. Let's keep going. Let's hold our nerve, even though we feel like we're probably in the worst part of the storm so far. And uh, what Peter does, and again, this has been, I think, talked about many times, is he looks at the wind and he's just overwhelmed by it. He takes his eyes off Jesus and he puts them, as it were, onto the storm. And what happens when he does that is, of course, the external storm becomes an internal storm. And in a way, the physical storm becomes like a storm in his, his spirit. He loses his peace, he loses his courage, and he's just churning with fear inside. And um, for us, it's, it, it's, it's such a great example of how it's almost classic, it's almost cliche, but just the reality is it's true as well, which is that we can take our eyes off Jesus and we put them on the, the, the latest news reports and all the stuff that we're seeing around us, which is scary. And it's like another wave of um, kind of like bad news and an, another gust of uh, kind of some other possible thing that could go wrong. And, and then internally we feel that wave of fear and we, we, that gust of anxiety churning us up and and it's not that we shouldn't be looking at the news. We need to be engaged 100%. But it's just that that sets, our, sets the tone for what's going on in our spirit. And the, um, the, the key to, I think, maintaining trust in Jesus is keeping our eyes on him, the eyes of our hearts, keeping meditating upon who he is. The trouble is, that is a lot easier said 
then it is done. Um, in the last 10 months, I think we must have said it so many times. Let's all keep our eyes on Jesus. But the uh, knowing the theory doesn't, doesn't make any difference. There is no benefit to knowing the theory, as far as I can see. You know what? Knowing that I should eat five fruit and veg a day doesn't benefit me unless I actually do it. Perhaps better to know than not know, but actually even knowing it doesn't make any difference. And, and um, I only get healthier if I consume the veg and the fruit. In the same way, knowing that we're to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because that's the key and instead of listening to all the noise around us to, to look to him, um, knowing that doesn't make a difference. Practicing it does though. Practicing it makes all the difference in the world. And so um, this is a time to double down. This is a time to resolve once again that we're going to do this. And so finding a little slot when we wake up in the morning to just look at him and remind ourselves of who it is that we serve and who walks beside us. In the middle of the day, snatching a little window here or five minutes there or, or, or three minutes here just to meditate on a name of Jesus or a verse or a promise of Jesus at the end of the day before we close our eyes at night to make sure the last thing we're looking at is him and meditating on him and who he is. These things day by day as we do them they begin to infuse us with confidence and with hope and yes with trust and yes with faith. Some of the names that I love to meditate on are the Good Shepherd. It's one of Jesus's names for himself. I love that because I'm his stupid, thick little sheep who doesn't have a clue and he is the strong, protective, loving shepherd. The saviour is another great way of just meditating on Jesus. He's the saviour. He saves me from my sin, from my selfishness, from my mistakes. He delivers me from them. He's my redeemer. There's another one. He doesn't just take something that's broken and fix it, but he redeems it for a positive purpose so it can be a blessing. Not just a story of something uh, mended, but a story of something transformed to the point where it gives life to others. He's my redeemer. And the, um, the good news, and we can finish with this as well, is that we, we, we do want to do this. I think we should aim to do it. We should be ambitious to try to do this. But even when we fail, um, we only meet his mercy. You know, our hope doesn't rest on how disciplined we are. Thank goodness for that. It rests on how faithful he is. Our foundation is not our own two feet. It's his grace that, that sits beneath our feet and that catches us every time we fall. Our hope is in his goodness and his faithfulness, not our own goodness and definitely not our own faithfulness. And so when we have days where we fail spectacularly at keeping our eyes on him and we are overwhelmed with absolute panic and we're terrified about what's going to happen and we feel really low and really far from him, all we need to say is help. And just as he did with Peter, he will grab us. And Jesus, I think, wants us to grow in our trust for him. And so he'll use circumstances. He doesn't cause these circumstances, but I think he uses them to help us trust him a little bit more and trust him a little bit more because that's how we mature as his followers and as his disciples. But he's always there to grab us when we stumble. And I think of it like a parent trying to teach a toddler how to walk. You know, if you've ever seen that, but they'll stand a little distance away from the toddler and they'll say, come on, you know, they'll hold out their hands. Come on, you can do it. And if the toddler takes a step, the parent might take a little step back. Come on, keep going. Come on, keep going. And they're pushing them and they're stretching them because they want them to, to learn how to do this. But then if the, if the toddler looks like it's about to fall, the parent will grab them. The parent is like the safety net. And I think in the same way, Jesus, because he loves us, he wants us to mature and develop. He'll say to us, you can trust me through this. Come on. I know you can do it. You've made it this far. Take another step. Come on, just another step. You can do it. Another day. Just trust me with another, another fear. You know I'm good for it. And then when we stumble and if we fall, he just grabs us. And all we meet is mercy. But then he might also say to us, come on. You know what? Why, why, what's got into you? You know I'm trustworthy. 
You know I'm the Lord of all. You know I'm your saviour, don't you? Why don't we try again tomorrow? How about tomorrow you fix your eyes on me? This is a time to hold our nerve, to fix our gaze on him and to keep walking towards him through the storm one day at a time. God bless.